Nazis used boxcars or cattle cars to transport the Jews to their death camps. A single boxcar was about the size of a single car garage. So if you can imagine a single car garage stuffed with 100 to 150 people, you can imagine how crushed these people were inside these cattle cars. They were so tightly stuffed in that uh, people couldn't even sit down. Many people died standing up in these cars. The boxcars had no ventilation in the winter. It was very cold in the summer. It was very hot. Uh, there was no food, no water, no sanitation. You can imagine the horrendous conditions that the people endured being transported this way. The uh, Nazis employed well over 200,000 people in, in the uh, transport of the Jews in these cattle cars. And the cattle cars account for the death of uh, 4 million of the 6 million Jews who died in the Holocaust. At the Holocaust Museum in St. Petersburg, Florida, you can see one of these cattle cars on display. There's also a Holocaust Museum in Washington, D.C., a very large one. I think it's the largest one in the United States. And it also has a cattle car on display. Now, there's an interesting place that has a cattle car on display, a little town in Tennessee. Whitwell, Tennessee, has its own cattle car as well. What happened was the um, principal of the middle school there wanted to do a project on diversity, and they ended up choosing the Holocaust as their project. And when the, the teachers were teaching the students, they came up with uh, the sum of six million Jews who passed away, who were murdered during the Holocaust. And one of the students said, what is six million? I can't picture six million people. Um, so they thought of this project. They were going to collect six million paper clips, one to represent each Jewish person who died. And uh, this project got a lot of publicity, and they ended up getting way more than six million paper clips, but they also got donated to them a cattle car, which they have on display in their little town, and they have it as a little Holocaust museum there. There's a very interesting cattle car on display at Yad Vashem, the Holocaust Museum in Jerusalem, Israel. This box car is sitting on a track hanging over a cliff which is very symbolic because the Jews put in these cattle cars were on their way to their death, just as this cattle car going over the cliff would plunge people to their deaths. On the banister of this boxcar at Yad Vashem is a poem that's inscribed um, into the banister of the car. And what it says is, Here in this carload, I am Eve with Abel, my son. If you see my other son, Cain, son of man, tell him I. And that's where it ends. Barbara mentioned that school or school students having a hard time visualizing six million people, so they got the paper clips to try and visualize that. Well, another project you can do to maybe visualize it even more in seeing six million people is take your class or your family or your congregation on a road trip. Let's say an eight to 10 hour road trip and try and cover the ground that it would take to drive past where six million people live and work. And to be able to do that in city areas, you'd have to, in Washington, D.C. area, you'd have to cover Arlington, Virginia, and Alexandria, Virginia. In the Florida area, you'd have to go down to Miami and the surrounding areas, including Fort Lauderdale and Pompano Beach. For Philadelphia, you'd have to include Camden and Wilmington, Delaware. In Georgia, you can do Atlanta, including Alpharetta and Sandy Springs, Georgia. In New York City, you can do just Brooklyn and Staten Island. A lot of apartments there, a lot of buildings there, a lot of people there, a lot of people walking there, and have them count every pe person they see, and how many, you guesstimate, how many people do you think are in that building, and stop at every store, and, and go into some malls, and, and drive by some schools, how many people do you think are in that school? In the Dallas area, you do Dallas and Fort Worth. In California, you can do Los Angeles and San Diego, that whole area there. San Francisco, San Jose, and Oakland, and, and do all those areas, and, and again, drive through every street possible, and when you're done driving through, say, we didn't even cover everywhere, but now imagine everyone we saw, and everyone we didn't see that were inside those schools, inside those buildings, inside those malls, inside those stores, and today they're all gone. Every single one of them. This entire area we just drove is now completely empty, and all those people are dead. Now, if you're not in any, near any of those cities, you might have to combine some states or some counties. 
but states, whole states, you'd have to combine all of Oregon and all of Idaho, all of Utah and all of Nevada, all of Mississippi and all of Arkansas, or all of Oklahoma and all of New Mexico, or all of Maine, New Hampshire, and Connecticut in order to compass six million people. Those are long road trips. Or you might have to cover five states if you're in Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, Wyoming, and Nebraska to visualize what six million people look like. And all of the people in those five states or those other states that I mentioned in those groupings, they're all gone and they're all dead. Now to visualize, as Barbara said, 100, 150 people in a single car garage. Maybe invite 100 people from your school or from your congregation to come to someone's house who has a single car garage and see what it's like to cram that many people into that one garage. To give them the feeling of what it would be like to be in a cattle car standing shoulder to shoulder, not being able to sit down, and to visualize not being able to eat, not being able to use the bathroom for days. Maybe even lock them in there. Give them a real experience. This will help give the people a sense of what these people suffered through before being taken to the death camps and tortured even worse.